What is going on guys, Pal in the shop, and tonight I want to show a test we did on our 406 small block here, where we ran it on 94 octane, then swapped it over to 87 octane to see what difference it made. Let's check it out. So you budget hot rodders are gonna love this video. A lot of guys will ask me about the 80, running things on 87 octane, and this is the first time I think I've done that. You know, nowadays uh, people are looking to save some money. It's a, maybe a few dollars per tank, depending on how much driving you do, that could add up. Um, but why I wanted to run it on this 406, in some cases, and, and some might think this is the worst case scenario as far as like quench. It has a, it, this thing has zero quench. And uh, theory is zero quench is better than bad quench. So this thing has zero quench. And what, what I mean by that is it has a huge disc piston with, it's not a deep shape piston, it's a huge stock style di uh, dish piston, 22 cc dish. Uh, it's the pistons are 35 in the hole. The head gaskets are 43 thou thick. So when I say it's got no quench, we're talking, it's just nothing there. Okay. Um, so we mix that with a steel cylinder head, but it is a vortex cylinder head. So it has a decent chamber. So we have a bad, you know, zero quench. I shouldn't say we have bad quench. We have zero quench and a good cylinder head. So that's why I wanted to do the 87 octane test on this engine. Uh, because I was interested. The static compression on this engine is 9.38 to 1. The dynamic compression, uh, and if you're not familiar with dynamic, that takes the static compression, the rod length, and the valve train events the intake closing point and gives you a more realistic number to if it's going to be running on pump gas. Uh, the ex, kind of the accepted number uh, for dynamic compression is around eight to one for 91 octane in a steel cylinder head. With this engine right here, we're about seven and a half to one. So we should be in, in the safe zone. Yeah. Pretty much the best timing for it was around 35, 36 degrees. But when we're on the dyno, we keep kind of moving the timing up and watch the power creep up the torque creep up and it gets to a point where it stops you're, you're there your, your timing's there it stops making more power if your timing's low it, you, you're going to have huge jumps until you get to that you know close uh area for ignition timing and that was around 35 36 but the engine was tested at 37 because we were trying to find that point and i never brought it back down luke at the dyno asked me if i was going to bring it back down i said no let's leave it there on the 91 because if we're kind of on the edge of it maybe pinging a little bit and we put the 87 octane, we should see a drop in power. So that's what, that's what I was interested in about. The other thing I was interested about is if this thing doesn't need the octane, if it's, I was, I was interested to see if the, the theory in, uh, when I posted a video on my Instagram, some guys were talking about this is 87 octane is technically more volatile than 94 octane. So that's a big jump in, in octane rating. Um, but, so if it doesn't need the octane, will it make more power with the 87 octane? So all this stuff is why I wanted to, wanted to know, I wanted to do the test and wanted to see. We have full load on the dyno, so if it's gonna ping, you, you'll usually have a pretty good drop in torque and power. Uh, so we ran it 94 octane first, changed nothing else, cleared it out, ran it on 87 octane. Here are the results. You're gonna to have to get a magnifying glass to look real closely because as you can see, as we average out the poles, there's almost a direct overlay between the 94 octane and the 87 octane on this engine. So it's safe to say our 406 with a static compression of 9.38 to one and a dynamic compression of seven and a half to one, this thing will run just fine on 87 octane in your vehicle. There is some, uh, you know, discrepancy if you want to take into account heat, uh, under hood heat, but I still think this thing is well within uh, the range that it'll still be fine. I don't know if you'll ever get this sort of load you would get uh, on the street as you would on a dyno. It's, there's no slipping like, like in the street. Uh, so I think you'd be pretty safe to run this thing on 87 octane if that's what you decided to do. All right, so you guys that stuck around to the end of this video, I wanted to, to share some things with you about our 406 here. Um, so this is just the beginning of our 406. 
Comment below. Let me know what you want. You guys want to see because I do have some plans for this 406. Right. What do you want us to see? Do what, what do you want to do with this 406? What do you guys want to see? Is this is going to be our dyno mule. You want to see some more testing done? Did a bunch of testing on it already. I'd like to do some more. So comment below. Let me know what you guys want to see. I already have some things in the works, but I'm curious what you guys are thinking on our 406. The original dyno video and everything's going to be posted below. The Rhodes lifter test, everything's going to be posted below. So if you're not familiar with it, go check it out and then maybe come back and let me know what you guys think. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Um, the subscribers let me know what you guys are interested in and I really appreciate you guys when you do that. Hit that like button and uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks guys.